Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the 2019 Isle of Man chess tournament. It's uh, Grandmaster Ahmed Adli versus uh, chess.com's second favorite commentator Robert Hess. Now uh, it, it is an interesting game and we're gonna dive straight into it but before that I would just like to mention a few uh, things about my previous video the game between Dehankar and Solikidu. Uh, uh, the reason it ca uh, you know it came to this misunderstanding is that uh, okay I received the, the PGN from my friend and then I published it on Twitter and uh, I went to sleep when I woke up in the morning I went to the Chess24 uh, website where I always check the moves and then I uh, confirmed them on the Chess Bomb website uh, where I uh, just copy paste them into my analysis software when I do the analysis and the the moves were as they were the, the Queen of Six move uh, happened before any rook the g8 ideas and i presented it as such and i was i was i mean i it it did seem suspicious to me that uh, it it happened but um then again, you know, it's chess. Things always happen. And the reason I d decided not to take it on the video is because I have a personal policy never to take it on my videos. One of the first videos I made on this channel is Bobby Fischer beats a grandmaster in 10 moves. And uh, that video is still publicly available. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, even though that game lasted over 40 moves, I ended the video after the 10th move and I said that uh, Fischer's opponent resigned the game. Where in fact that is completely incorrect. Uh, and uh, I received a lot of negative comments about that. But... Uh, um, it it serves as a reminder to uh, not to make uh, uh, videos about chess games, uh, you know, th that I think I know by heart. So as of that uh, video, I never again uh, made a video, uh, made a video about a game that I remember by heart. So I always check the PGN before making the video, and here I blundered into such a situation that all the websites in the world had the PGN wrong. Even now, at the moment I'm making this video, all the websites still have the PGN wrong. They show that queen to f6 move was played. And first I thought, yeah, I'm not going to show the move, but then my friend said, yeah, I mean, you could show it. It might be, you know, it might be fun for your subscribers. Uh, you know, maybe they will feel less bad about the games they play, you know, may make uh, fun in, you know entertaining video about it and I said ah, okay uh, I will do it and then as soon as I published it well not as soon but some maybe half an hour I started receiving messages that Chessbase India already has this video uh, with analysis on their channel and that Rook Captures on G8 happened first and then the game followed as it did uh, whereas uh, Dehankar won a really nice game against a much higher rated opponent. Now the, uh, another reason uh, I decided not to take down this video uh, is because uh, well it will uh, it, it shows you the game and it also drives traffic to the Chess Base India's channel where you will see this game and I, I I don't know I wouldn't see this game if it wasn't for uh, for the supposed mistake and this way a lot of you will see the original game and the original game is uh, well it, it is a very nice game so that's uh, just something I wanted to mention uh before checking it out and i changed the the title of the video i changed the description of the video so everyone knows what's happening uh some of you were saying that uh, i should also take down the video because it uh you know shows uh, that uh, women don't really play good chess uh, i don't agree uh, i think that uh, there are uh, ugly comments about the women's chess uh, on this video and uh, pretty much on every video on the internet where women play but that says nothing about women's chess that only says something about the the people that write comments like that so uh, i i mean uh, the video I, i'm keeping the video on <laughs> as as a further reminder to always triple check everything and to, uh to well it it's it just uh, i i don't have a I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, take the video down. Uh, that's uh, just what I wanted to mention before checking it out. And although I did mention it in the previous video in the comment section in my pinned comment, I will also invite everyone out to check out uh, Chessbase India's uh, version of the video, uh, where you have an interview between Shaga Shah and uh, Young uh, Dehankar, so you can also check out her analysis of the game and see that it was in fact a brilliant game that she played. Uh, so ju just wanted to mention that. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure I wanted to mention a couple of other stuff, but um, yeah, that's I, I think that's uh, that, that's that will suffice it before we check out this game. So uh, that being said, uh, Ahmed Adli versus Robert Hess, uh, or, uh, Adli with the white pieces opens with knight to f3. So we have uh, we have uh, the the ready opening knight to f6 by Robert. We have c4 uh, and now g6. Uh, we have b3 preparing to fianchetto the dark square bishop and b sorry that's a king uh, bishop to g7. We have bishop to b2 and now castles. 
uh, g3, uh, oddly prepares the fianchetto to both sides of the board. We have c6 preparing d5 uh, and bishop to g2. So d5, this is all uh, very standard, uh, and white uh, castles here. And now a5. Uh, we have d3 by white, and now there are uh, some very uh, popular moves here, like knight to a6, also a4 is an idea here, but uh, the move uh, uh, black plays b5 uh, is not a new move in the position, but it's an extremely rare move in the position. So either something uh, has plays very often, he knows about it, or, or something he prepares specifically for this game. Uh, but now here we have knight bd2 is a known move, queen to c2 is a known move, but here we have c captures on b5, and it is uh, already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So okay, c captures on b5, we have knight to c3 now, attacking the b5 pawn, and the queen to b6, guarding the b5 pawn. Uh, rook to c1, developing the rook, and now comes knight to c6. Uh, and here we have a4. Uh, attacking uh, b5, there's a double attack on the b5 now, and although you could push b4, get uh, get this knight over to b5, uh, Hess decides to go for bishop to a6 instead. And okay, a captures on b5, we have bishop captures on b5, offering the bishop pair for the moment, but uh, white says, I can always capture that, there, there's no rush, if you want to bring the bishop back, you will have to waste another move. So bishop to a3, getting the bishop on this very nice uh, diagonal, also attacking the e7 pawn if, if the knight moves, uh, and rook f to c8 now. The c file is the only open file on the board, so uh, you should put your rooks uh, on that file. We have knight to a4 by white, now offering a trade here, and the queen back to d8, saying, I don't want to trade, you can leave your knight on the rim. Uh, and here we have bishop to h3. Very rare uh, opportunity to see uh, two bishops on a3 and h3, not something you will see very often. So the rook uh, on c8 is under attack. We have e6 uh, by Hess. We have knight to c5 now, an excellent outpost for the knight, and now comes queen to e7. It seems odd putting the queen in front of the bishop like this, but... Um, uh, the, the knight cannot move as the bishop is unprotected here, so it's basically the stronger piece uh, controlling the, the knight and the weaker piece. Uh, we have queen to d2 by white, uh, connecting rooks, developing the queen, and now comes knight to b4. Uh, just uh, blocking bishop's defense of the knight here. Of course you can capture, no, nothing wrong with that, but there is a double attack on your c5 knight here. So here white plays queen to e3, and this is only move 19, uh, but already we have uh, something very interesting happening on the board. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find, uh, well, the best move for black in this uh, position. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, winning a piece. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's actually d4. d4 just blocking the queen's defense of the knight here. Point being, uh, you cannot capture with the queen to keep on defending the knight on c5. If you capture with the queen, knight d7, you open up an attack against the queen, and there's also now a triple attack against the knight on c5. So uh, you don't have a move here. You have to move the queen, and then just knight captures on c5, wins a piece. So after d4, why? White had to go for knight captures on d4, and then we have rook captures on c5, just uh, grabbing that piece. Rook captures, we have queen captures, and now rook to c1. Okay, pushing the queen back, queen to b6, and now comes knight captures on b5. You cannot, ca you cannot trade queens here, as you have to recapture the knight. So queen captures on b5, and now comes rook to c5. Just uh, attacking the black queen. Queen to a6, and now comes uh, queen to c1. So uh, the queen is uh, now doubling up, uh, doubled up with the rook on the c file, and uh, white puts a lot of pressure <laughs> on black's position, but black is still up a piece, which is not something uh, to take lightly. Uh, we have knight f to d5 by Hess, uh, and now comes the bishop back to g2, pushing, uh, putting the bishop on this nice diagonal, not allowing the knight to move, uh, but Hess finds a nice way to unpin. He plays knight to c3. And it's just a, just a very interesting idea. Uh, uh, of course, if you capture the rook, uh, for example, bishop captures, then you get knight captures on e2, and you lose the queen. So not something you want to do. And also, uh, what else can you do? You could play rook captures on c3, uh, sort of uh, trying to win two pieces uh, for the rook, but then black has knight to a2, attacking the rook and the queen, and now you're just going to recapture here. So also not possible. So here, uh, oddly goes for bishop to f3, he keeps an eye on the e2 pawn and now rook to c8 so everything working nicely for black uh, we have queen to g5 
uh, at defending the c5 rook and now comes h6 pushing the queen back so if you don't want to uh, mess something up and not uh, keep an eye on the rook as there aren't any squares you can use here to keep an eye on the rook uh, rook captures on c8 we have queen captures on c8 and now queen captures on a5 and okay white did grab a couple of pawns it's uh, six pawns white four pawns black so for the for the piece you have two pawns and if you can somehow get your uh, past b pawn uh, rolling up the board it will be it will be uh, could be very nice you do have a light square bishop guarding b7 if you can get your dark square bishop somewhere like f4 maybe to guard the queening square it could be possible but we have knight to c2 now offering uh well not offering but uh, attacking the a3 pawn you want to further trade down we have bishop to c5 not allowing this trade and now comes knight to e1 or uh preparing to capture on f3 we have bishop back to h1 white cannot allow any trades as he's down a piece and now knight captures on e2 with check king to f1 now both knights are under attack and now comes the knight captures on d3 inviting the king to, to capture here but doesn't really matter if king captures just knight captures on c5 and yes you can start pushing your b pawn but after the knight moves it's not really uh you, you will not be able to uh, do anything with this pass pawn as black still has a, a knight a bishop and a queen so we have bishop to e3 of course not allowing this trade and now queen to c2 preparing queen to d1 followed by well whatever <laughs> white decides to play uh, we have bishop to e4 now pinning this knight and now queen to d1 with check we have king to g2 and now comes knight to e1 again with check king back to f1 and now although you have a lot of very interesting discoveries feel free to pause the video here and try to find the best discovery in the position while i give you a couple of seconds for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on finding the best discovery in the position knight f3 does win knight to d3 does win but knight to c2 is the quickest way to the uh, to victory uh, and in fact it was in this position on move 37 that ahmed adli resigned the game and uh, an excellent victory with the black pieces for for uh, robert hess uh, he he resigned here because uh, well after you move the king there really is no other option you cannot block as e e1 square is covered after you move the king you're getting knight cap on e3 with check f captures and now just uh, queen ca uh, queen to g1 check uh, king to h3 and now everything were, uh, is working properly queen to f1 check and now after bishop to g2 knight to g1 check king to g4 and now just f5 check you don't really have a move here king to h4 and now bishop to f6 will be checkmate so this is a pretty uh, straightforward mating sequence so of course uh, oddly did not uh, <laughs> need to con uh, didn't uh, uh, need to continue the game after knight to c2 check he simply resigned the game because even if he doesn't get mated uh, chances are very slim that he will be able to do anything here and it's a pretty forced variation so of course he calculated it very very quickly so very interesting game and a very uh, well very strange uh, uh, moment that uh, such a strong player as Ahmed Adli will, will blunder a piece like that but it does happen if the PGN to this game is correct because now I will have to wonder about every game if the PGN is correct before posting it and uh, I was also contacted by a subscriber uh, Eric he said uh, he sent me this quote by, by uh, Rachel Volchin it's not how we make mistakes but how we correct them that, that defines us uh, stating that I definitely should take down the video that I made uh, but I prefer to, to correct my mistakes but by not pretending that uh, I made them so I, I, I own up to my mistakes and uh, whatever I did in that video this is an entertainment channel after all and uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't portray uh, either of the players in a, in a bad spotlight if anything it's an 11 minute video of me making an idiot of myself so uh, that's uh, yeah j just wanted to, to share that with you guys so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to cover at least one more game from this round uh, tomorrow. So then we're going to check out the standings a little bit more and some other interesting games. So of course, feel free to use the hashtag suggestion. Uh, I would like to thank uh, John Newlin, uh, Chris Nickel Felton, uh, Torben Anderson, Wade Coleman, and Anton Sorokov for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Isle of Manchester tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh well as usual everything else that uh, happens in the chess world uh, uh ho hopefully the pigeons will be correct this time so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day